<laughs> Wondering where you can get the latest news and reviews from the world of paranormal entertainment? Frank and Laura take a look at the latest happenings and break down what's new on TV and at the movies each week on Spooktacular, your paranormal entertainment roundup. Check them out by searching for Spooktacular in iTunes or head on over to Spooktacular.com. Oh, yeah, be sure to bring along a friend because <laughs> no one should listen alone. <laughs>
and the girls here. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, my. Nah, that's what I... Do that some more, Amber. Mm, you want me to keep talking like this the whole time? Yeah, you keep talking like that, okay. girl. Okay, all right. <laughs> Next up is James Willis. <laughs> Everyone holla. You guys can't see me, but she's actually, she's actually doing the neck thing and everything, too. Oh, I mean, she's got it going on. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Go, girl. I'm going to be mm. sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did mention our, our next guest here, who's waiting patiently. And that was a great intro, by the way. Yeah, James Damn here right. is great. Yeah, whatever. James A. Willis is here with us. Um, and we, You know, I, I do have the bio here. We were... We we hung out a couple weeks ago at the Ohio conference, which was an absolute pleasure, and um, I just felt that you know I just was so excited about talking to James and his, his lovely wife Stephanie that we just I'm like I, James you got to come on the show and come hang out with this you know so I couldn't help myself James is here James are you on the line there or have you left us already no no I, and I haven't given up on you yet I'm still here <laughs> I'm surprised he still speaks to us <laughs> what the punishment evidently <laughs> but you know you shouldn't say that to me because I'm really good at punishing. <laughs> Oh, promises, promises. Oh, you wait till the next time I see you now. Okay. Do we notice. You guys just got back from a little trip, from what I understand. We don't need to get into too many details on that. But you were, we were on break, and we were kind of talking for a few minutes. And you guys were, well, can, I, can I say the state you were in at least? Is that cool? Sure. I don't care. Well, you know, I, it's just this was me. You guys went to Florida for a week, you, you and your wife, Stephanie. We did. And you guys come across, you know, because... You're always out there. I mean, I know this for a fact. You know, no matter even when you're on your off time, you're always looking for something weird, some weird thing that's going on out there. You know, hence you know your trade, what you do. You know, writing and stuff like that. You're always out there looking for stuff. And I, you know, even on the off time, like I said, you said you come across something in, in Florida that you found very weird. Do you want to elaborate on this? Yes, indeed. And, and I'm hoping that your listeners might be able to help because this thing was even too weird for me. I, I can't figure out what the deal is with this place. Um, it is uh, technically in a little town called Lake Wales, and it's called Spook Hill. Okay. And what totally intrigued me was that as you're getting closer and closer, they've got um, these brown historical markers, you know, where they point the way to, you know, churches and castles and all these things of historical significance. Mm-hmm. And then they have one that says Spook Hill on it. So we were like, wow, you know, this is historically significant somehow. And The coolest part about the entire trip is you know you're there. If anybody wants to find it, all you have to do is type into on your GPS the name of a school that I really wish I could have gone to. It's called it's called Spook Hill Elementary School. Oh my! (laughs) Nice. For real? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And they've actually got. I guess it's their mascot. It's Casper, and he's flying through the air with a with a satchel full of books. So. So yeah, if, if anybody wants to find this on their own, they just need to type that into a GPS and. Go right past the school, and you'll find Spook Hill. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Now, that was that was the coolest part. Now comes the very confusing part. So we, we find it, and it's a one-way street, and it's got a gigantic um, wooden sign. On it is the, the legend of Spook Hill. Okay. And the story goes, and I'll say this slow because your listeners and you guys are going to be like, wait a second, I don't understand that. <laughs> but the legend said that many, many years ago, there was an Indian chief who roamed the countryside there, and then he came across a great alligator who apparently had taken up residence in the area. So the two of them had a big fight, okay. and they don't really go into who won, but there was a big fight. All right. Many years later, some pioneers took up residence at the top of the hill, and one morning they got up and their horses were at the bottom of the hill... And they said, wow, that's Spook Hill. Then what you're supposed to do is take your car, drive a quarter of the way up the hill to the white line, which is really cool because there's a giant white line on the road. Mm -hmm. So you put your car right on the white line, you put it in neutral, and you roll down the hill. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. It's not like the other gravity hills where, like, you're supposedly pushed up the hill. Yeah. yeah. You literally just put it in neutral and you roll back down the hill. Now, what that has to do with an alligator, an Indian chief, and pioneers who get drunk when I can't find their horses, I have no idea. So the car is, you again, just to clarify, you go on, you go on top of the hill with your vehicle, you put it in neutral, and it rolls down the hill. Right. You're actually maybe a quarter of the way up the hill. So I don't know if at one point... 
that didn't look like you were on the hill, maybe? I don't know. But you clearly, <laughs> we stood there saying, no, this can't be right. Maybe we're supposed to turn the car around. But it's a one-way street, so you can't really do that. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, the sign tells you exactly what to do. It's like pull up to the, the white line, put it in neutral, and, and be frightened when the car rolls down the hill. Maybe because you're going to hit another car. I don't know. But it's <laughs> We did it five or six times trying to figure out all the different possible ways that it would suddenly frighten us, but <laughs> I, it, it didn't work. And they, I mean, it did roll down the hill, but, I mean, I can do that outside of my own house. Well, no, I didn't no, have to go to Florida say, for it. Yeah, we're not, yeah we're, not, we're not breaking any new ground. This is gravity. It's very yeah. simple. The car will do that if you're on an incline. It's going to roll down. Now, and there's no other explanation for anything around there. I mean, what you, what you presented here, there's, that's all they have out there, right? That, that is it, yeah, and there's, like I said, there is a giant sign that, you know, if your listeners want, I'll put it up on, you know, my Twitter, Facebook, or whatever those things, you know, for people to look at, but it's, it's a giant sign that tells the story, but at no point do they say, you know, it rolls down the hill because, I don't know, you've ticked off the ghost of an alligator or the Indian guy or something. It's, it just says, let it roll backwards and, you know, be frightened. Okay. Yeah, that that's weird. That, yeah, I can, would that actually make one of the books, James? I mean, because because you really can't. Well, you probably have to do a lot more research on that before you could do anything with that. Yeah, I actually think that it would. I mean, it's it's funny because you know our our friend Charlie Carlson, who did actually he did the Weird Florida book. Mm-hmm. I haven't like yet looked in it to see if it's in there. But as we were leaving, I told Steph, I said, yeah, this has got to end up somewhere because to me it was really cool. We took pictures of the. When you go into town, there's about five or six different historic buildings there, so there's a giant sign that has them all listed, and smack dab in the middle, you've got Spook Hill. So, that you know, the, they're quite proud of it, and the I couldn't find when the school actually went up. Um, the only cornerstone that I found was the addition, but that was in 1981. Mm-hmm. So this legend has been around a while, but, you know, I, I've, in various other states, I've gone to these Gravity Hill type things. I mean, there's there's a couple even in Ohio mm-hmm. where there's a legend that, you know, you stop on the railroad tracks and the, you know, the ghost of the children who were killed in a car yeah. crash will, yeah. will push you off or they'll push you up the hill. And there's this optical illusion that you're being pushed as mm-hmm. opposed to rolling. But this was nothing like that at all. It did, uh... It's, it's so, definitely weird. Well, it's yeah, weird. It, it, it's weird because it's uh, it's not weird. <laughs> I guess that's, I yeah, guess. And, and but it was such a big I don't know such a big thing there that they decided to name the school after it because <laughs> the road is not called Spook Hill. Mm-hmm. It's just what they call that particular thing. You know that's why I said if you do a GPS for Spook Hill Elementary, mm-hmm. you'll find it. But there is no Spook Hill. And is, it, is this an, is this an actual operating school, Spook Hill Elementary? It still is a school. I mean, there's kids going there every year. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wait. Oh wait. Here we go. Steph. Steph. My 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 lovely assistant here just handed me a picture. Here is this is what is written on the sign. Okay. The legend of dot 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 for no apparent reason. Spook Hill. <laughs> Ages ago, an Indian town on Lake Wales Lake. Uh huh. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> was plagued with raids by a huge gator. The town's great warrior chief, who apparently has no name, and oh, and the gator were killed in a final battle that created the huge swampy depression nearby. Okay. The chief was buried on its north side. It stops there for no apparent reason. <laughs> Later, pioneer haulers coming from the old army trail atop the ridge above found their horses laboring there, dot, 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 <laughs> at the foot of the ridge, dot, dot, and called it Spook Hill. Okay. Is, it the, is it the gator seeking revenge or the chief protecting his land? And then in big all caps it says, stop car on white line, place in neutral, and let it roll back. Is, it, is there like a Walmart around there anywhere or something, James? There is not. <laughs> no, are, is there any type of commerce in the, around this area at all? Uh, no, and they do not, to what I could find, sell Spook Hill T-shirts either. Oh, wow. <laughs> so this is just something cool. They did. It's mean, in the middle of nowhere, yeah. I mean, if you blink, you miss it. As I said, it's a one-way street. Steph and I were probably there for 
20 minutes, maybe a half an hour, trying to figure out how to make it work. And we actually, there was one car that passed us the whole time. Oh, my God. Well, well, hopefully there will be some more information that will come out on this sometime because it seems pretty spotty right now, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I think that's, that's obvious. But, I mean, well, still, regardless, it's still a cool thing to do and go out there and check these places out. I know it's what you like to do anyways. So regardless of how strange it may be and even may, may be anticlimactic kind of bit, you've done it, though. You know what I mean? And that's, I think that's what the most important part is. So, yeah, hey, great for you to go out there and check it out regardless. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm always up for I always tell people that as long as I can walk away from visiting a place with a story or two to tell, it was all good. So, you know, I mean, you can't yeah, always find the real... It has to make sense. Yeah. That's absolutely. right. That makes it better if it doesn't make sense because it makes the story last longer because then you can, you know, you get invited to a lot of drinking parties and you tell the story and then you laugh when people are like... Wow, I had too much to drink because I don't really understand the story. <laughs> I think I had too much to drink today. <laughs> well, no, I, I said that in Ohio. We, uh, some of us were talking at the conference in Ohio, and we were joking around about that. I'm like, look, it don't matter what happens to you at the time. It's about the story you have at the end. Yep, <laughs> okay. That's right. You know, it may suck right now, but you're going to have a really great story to tell later on. So come on, you know, just, just buck it up and, and deal with it. <laughs> so that's a great story to tell, though, obviously. Were you able to visit? Was there any other places you guys were able to visit in Florida, or was that the only one? Um, that was actually the only really weird um, one that we went to. We actually, I was kind of on a kick of, um, sadly, due to the economy, um, we went um, to Kissimmee. We went outside of the Orlando area that at one point was just a booming metropolis, kind of a, you know, the overspill, if you will, oh, from yeah. Orlando, where, I mean, you couldn't, you know, throw a rock without hitting some weird offbeat attraction. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of on a kick that we just kind of drove up and down the main strip and just took loads and loads of pictures of what were, at one point, were really cool tourist attractions, but they're all gone now. So there's... Um, you know, abandoned zoos that were just laying all out exposed to the elements. There's a uh, uh, place that was actually, it ended up on the cover of Weird Florida. It was Gator World. And uh, they actually, um, it's since, it, part of it burnt down, the giant gator that was out in the front part of it um, mm -hmm. burnt down. I'm sorry, it's actually Gator Land. Um, but they they rebuilt it um, and kind of, refixed it up a little bit and stuff. Yeah. So that was kind of cool to check out that. But then right down the street from that was Jungle World, <laughs> which is totally closed down. But they have the second or the world's second largest fake alligator. I don't know, some ridiculous thing like that. But it, <laughs> it's actually towering over the, the street. And it's got a Jeep in its mouth turned upside down like it's crushing it. So that's oh, a photo God. op right there. <laughs> <laughs> I want your life. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded quite menacing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have met me. <laughs> well, well regard. I we were in Florida actually last year. We we just, we went to what? We went to Disney, mm -hmm. which I think they don't say that like it's a bad thing. It was a horrible. Disney thing. is the happiest place on earth. Is it? It is. It isn't when you're chafing. Wear oh, underwear. Didn't I tell you this story, James? I, 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 I'm going to say yes, just so because I don't want you to tell it. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you told me many times, Thank many you. times. Okay, fine. I won't tell the story then. No, we were, we didn't get to check out any weird things, but I, I have been through there a couple of times where, and you do see these weird, odd attractions. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even going like down I-75, you know, going through Ohio or going down in the Kentucky and Tennessee areas, you always will see that stuff on the side of the roads, all these insane attractions, you know, world's largest giraffe. Yep. And you're like, what? How can it? And you get there, it's a big plastic giraffe. It's like 40 foot tall or something. You're like, oh, okay, great. Well, that's like the huge Jesus on the side of the road. Well, that's, yeah. The, the, we, uh, how many times have we talked about that, James? How many times have you talked about that? The big buttery it's a classic. Giraffe. It's a classic. Yeah, I mean, we always have to look at that uh, when we're going on there. There's all these things all over the road, though. And, yeah, especially in Florida there, unfortunately, with the economy, a lot of these places are no more. So it's kind of sad that they're not even operating now. You know, they're just these these dead artifacts that kind of just sit there and you take pictures of them and that's all you can really get from them now. It's, it's kind of a bummer, actually. Yeah, because there were even a couple of places that we pulled over and took pictures of, and I was then trying to hit the bookstores to see if I could find any historical, you know, books to see what they were. But there was one that was, 
Um, it was for sale. It was 20,000 square foot, and it was clearly at one point like a haunted house attraction oh, because wow. it was designed like a giant castle. And they still had, like, the torches hanging off the sides of it. I mean, just this gorgeous, creepy, gothic-looking thing mm -hmm. that was all boarded up. And the signs had all been knocked down, so you couldn't tell oh, no. what it was at one point. But, you know, if you're thinking it was a creepy haunted castle to begin with, and now it's abandoned on top of that, it was totally, you know, just twisted to go by that. Well, you guys are going to get another trip here pretty soon, too. Uh, you're going to be going down to the Mothman Festival like we all do every Yay. year. Yeah, um, it's, it's the annual tradition. Heading down the Mothman. Right again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, see, that's tradition too. I think. Yay. Well, you know, this will give me an opportunity to kind of talk about the Mothman Festival, if you if you don't mind, James. Um, it's obviously, you know, this is our, you know, for Ghostly Talk also, and for James Willis, the Mothman Festival is one of those things that's near and dear to our hearts. We go to a lot of conferences every year, but the Mothman Festival, it, it's our, it's 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 definitely. I I would honestly, I can say with all honesty that this is that is the top of our list. The Mothman Fan Festival is our favorite thing to go to every year because we've been going to it for so long now, and it was kind of like the, the the place where we kind of cut our teeth, you know, as far as traveling is concerned with the radio show. So it, it's always been our favorite, and we love to go there. This year is going to be really cool, though, because uh, as you know, James, um, you know, the, uh, us dorks here at Ghostly Talk, we've been the ones who are we're putting together the speakers every year now, right? Yep. yep. And this year, I really pushed. To, to have the speaker present the presentation part of the Mothman Festival we put indoors now for a change. As we know, it's been outdoors for the last couple of years. And James, you're the one that took the full brunt of that because um, you had a big <laughs> boat coming on you while you were trying to give your presentation. This giant, what was that, paddle boat? Come, yeah. come rolling in while you're trying to talk, and it just hilarity ensued with me screaming at the paddle boat driver in the back while you're doing your thing. So I really pushed for that, and Jeff Wamsley, the, the great guy that he is, who, who coordinates this festival, said we're going to do it this year in, in, at the theater down the street. So all the speakers are going to be indoors now, which we're really excited about. Uh, but it's it, per usual for people out there who have never been before, it's a free festival. Uh, you can get all the information at mothmanfestival.com. Uh, it's uh, let me see here. My God, my brain stopped. It's September nineteenth and twentieth yeah. that weekend. Um, I think the, and people have been asking me about the Low Hotel, and I'm pr I I actually I talked to Jeff this week because the Low Hotel is where everybody wants to stay at, right? Uh, it's already booked up. You can't you can't get near it. I don't think. Um, so you're gonna have to go to the hotel like we do across the way over in, yeah. in Ohio. <laughs> stay with us in Ohio because we party. Yeah. So September 19th and 20th, James Willis is gonna be there with a host of other really great speakers. Uh, and it's gonna be a really it's gonna be a great time. It's always it has been a good time. How many years have you been going there, James? I think this is going to be my third. I think third year. Yeah. Then we start going. I think we started going back in 2004. That was our. I think that was our first year. Heck, I don't even remember anymore. It's been so long. And I remember Wamsley coming up to me and Duggan's like, okay, you guys are going to be speaking at 3 o'clock. And we're like, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Who's speaking? We're not, we're not, we don't speak, you know. What do you, what, 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 and what they, they really didn't. It was really atrocious what they did. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad, was it? Oh, it was horrible. What did we do that was that bad? Well... I could see you guys, and that was a downside. Oh, side. Jesus. Bonnie, you know what? You're getting ridiculous. The mic's <laughs> coming out now. The I, mic's gone. I, I, I actually have to say, though, Scott, that I take a bit of fiendish pleasure actually watching you speak because you, you kind of go up there and you willingly make you like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be talking about, and then you'll just randomly call people out. You'll, you, sir, <laughs> you, you have a question, don't you? <laughs> yeah. And I actually like that because you kind of turn the tables because normally, you know, when – with myself and Steph, you know, she's like, go ahead, monkey, get up there and dance. You know, I have to jump around and fill full a monster and tell some crazy story. But you go up there and you're like, no, I'm not doing anything. You're doing the work. Well, we've been doing it like that for years. Because we're just too lazy. Do you know, James, like, you have a really nice presentation. I mean, it looks good. I mean, and you, you obviously, you know, you're, you're one of my favorite speakers out there that, you know, that speak on these subjects and stuff like that. Uh, and... You obviously know how to do it. You're very good at what you do. I can't say that enough. Whereas Doug and I, we just we just don't. We we're like what? <laughs> we do this every week. So why do we why do we want to do the same thing every week? We just want to yeah turn it over and harass the people that are in the crowd that were dumb enough to sit there and watch us talk in the first place. So we, yeah, we make we make our problem their problem essentially. <laughs> that's, that's great though. No, well, it, and it, I think that approach always. It, Always, it does start up a decent conversation, though, too. I actually think at the first one you spoke at, you guys actually did try to talk yeah. more. 
And then we learned that real quick. We treated that much like the radio show. We're like, why is this got to be so organized, too? Like, it'll be a complete mess like the radio show is, too. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then you had me on, and it became more of a mess. Why don't we take a quick break here? Because when we come back, James, I mean, we, I, I, didn't, I had no idea we were going to talk about all that stuff, but we got into it, so that's cool. But I, I do want to talk about your, this new project you're working on that we talked about today. Cool. Uh, briefly. Let's, let's get into that. Why don't we do that in a second here, though? This is Ghostly Talk. I'm sorry. This is Scott L. and the girls. I am Scott L. I'm girl one. I'm girl two. And we'll be right back after this. Go sleep time! Do you want to dive into the bizarre world of the paranormal? Do ghosts, UFOs, or the supernatural amaze you to the point of wanting to learn more? Well then, you need BVRN, the Black Vault Radio Network. With more than 1,200 hours of on-demand talk radio, syndicated from more than 35 shows, the Black Vault Radio Network is your one-stop shop for the world of the unexplained. Check us out and tune in 24 hours a day at www.blackvaultradio.com. Again, that's www.blackvaultradio.com. The Darker Side of the Moon is an alternative talk variety show. DarkerSideRadio.com Since 2006, host Becky Ray and Laura Moon speak with independent filmmakers, authors, musicians, artists, and many, many more. DarkerSideRadio.com Sometimes serious, mostly fun, the show has a little for everyone. Was it odd, freaky, and you didn't hear it on the 5 o'clock news? Then we'll probably cover it here. DarkerSideRadio.com DarkerSide currently airs live Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 7 p.m. Central and 5 p.m. Pacific. DarkerSideRadio.com If you happen to miss it, you can listen to show archives at any time online at DarkerSideRadio.com or you may subscribe to the show on iTunes.
Wolfman Mac. From Wolfman Mac's Nightmare Cinema. We're hanging out at the haunted winery here in Warren, Michigan, with the good folks from the Ghostly Talk. Ooh, this place is creepy, man, but nowhere near as creepy as Wolfman Max Nightmare Cinema. It's a haunted drive-in, babies. And you know what we do there? We host classic B horror and sci-fi movies, just like the ones you grew up with when you was a kid. But it's at Wolfman Max Nightmare Cinema right now, hosting on public access TV all over Metro Detroit. But guess what, kiddies? It's coming to you, and all you got to do is have a computer. Just go to Wolfman Max Nightmare Cinema. It's NightmareCinema.com. We'll be broadcasting the show real soon, right from the website. Stay tuned. It's Wolfman Max Nightmare Cinema. Bye. Ghostly Talk. Don't call it to the microphone or anything, Bonnie. You just kick I'm back sorry, and relax, and I'll take relaxing. care. Of, I'll kick back and take care of everything here. You're gonna kick back and take care of it all. I said you kick back and I'll take care of everything. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you too, Amber? Yeah. So the girls are done for the night. Scott's just gotta take over. Scott, you want me to massage over. your feet, Amber? Oh yeah. Be great. Okay. <laughs> We're talking to James A. Willis. Uh, and he's hot. <laughs> oh, my God. Can and I'm horribly confused. <laughs> James has been a friend of the show for many years. you got something new you're working on. Uh, you kind of alluded to this earlier today. And I w- if you want, I'd like to talk a little bit on the show here. What, what, is it th- what is the next project that James Willis has going on? I, I did that in third person for you, too. So there you go. What is it that you're working on now, James? I am. Oh, well, it's funny you should ask. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually uh, finishing up uh, working on an anthology that is called uh, Armchair Reader Goes Hollywood. Okay. Uh, Armchair Reader is a uh, basically a, a publisher, and they they put out a series of books related to different topics. So mm-hmm. that's where the whole Armchair Reader goes Hollywood comes from. Okay. But that being said, um, I have always growing up been like a huge music and movie buff, and so I, I got a rare opportunity to kind of write about all sorts of weird, twisted, you know, legends about you know the movie industry, everything from you know. You know, ghosts that are supposed to appear in the back of scenes in movies to, you know, curses that are related to actors and actresses to, yeah. you know, you, you name it, all sorts of twisted things. So that, I mean, I, I actually had a blast writing that. I mean, um, a story that I just finished was sort of the uh, top five things that were actually hidden in movies that people actually don't really know were there, but when they go back, almost like bloopers that were left in. Yeah. Um, my favorite one of that was actually from the, uh, well, old people like me just call it Star Wars, but I guess technically it's Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Yeah. But, you know, but, but when I was little, it was just Star Wars. It was Wars, Star but, Wars. I yeah. was the same here, too. It was just called Star Wars. But there, there's a scene that it's still being debated as to whether or not they actually knew when they were filming that it was a mistake. But it's the scene where uh, Luke and company are kind of... Uh, drowning, getting ready to get crunched up in the trash compactor, and, you know, C-3PO and R2-D2 are just, you know, running amok, not really paying attention, and yeah. uh, there's a cutaway scene where, uh, you know, Luke is actually yelling at them to hurry up, and then there's a cutaway scene where a bunch of stormtroopers actually blast through the door, and then they come marching in to go see what's going on. Thanks to DVDs, you can actually go back and do it slowly, but you don't even really need to, mm-hmm. but, um, when the stormtroopers all come marching through the door, so they'll come marching towards the camera, mm-hmm. keep an eye on the stormtrooper on the far right. Okay. It's easy to pick out because he's, he's a wee bit taller than all the other stormtroopers. Okay. So they all come marching through the door, 
and he comes marching in with the other ones, and I said he's a wee bit taller than the other ones. He just walks right into the top of the door frame. I mean, he just brains himself. And you actually hear a little clanking noise, and he kind of stumbles back. The rest of the stormtroopers just keep walking as if nothing is going on. But if you keep watching him in the background, he kind of readjusts his head <laughs> and then marches along with the rest of them. <laughs> and, I mean, this was a, you think this was a blooper, obviously? I mean, it doesn't sound like it's something a stormtrooper would normally do. They're pretty slick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's just totally out of character. And, I mean, it's, you can hear the noise. You actually hear his head hitting. Um, some people have said that, you know, after they finished the, and they came out on VHS way back when, that when they noticed it was in there, that when they put it out onto DVD, they actually added the, the clanking noise. I did go back and look at my old VHS, and it is still in there with okay. a little clanking noise. So, <laughs> But, yeah, it's just something you don't ever, you know, you've seen, like, tons of times. I mean, once you see it, you'll know the scene. Mm-hmm. But it, all of a sudden, when you look, you're like, wow, look at that. <laughs> he just whacked himself. There. Well, the, one of my favorite ones, um, is that's a new one for me. I honestly have never heard that one before, so definitely I am going to be watching Star Wars now to find that for sure. But one that I have known about for many years is the weird, um, well, it's, it's the legend from the film Three Men and a Baby. Yes, okay? yes. <laughs> now, I can tell you. I want to hear what you have to say about this, obviously, but I can tell you that when I first heard about this many years ago, we had that film on VHS at the house, and it was the first thing I did is I came home and watched that scene uh, that we're going to talk about, okay? Uh, and, it, and to be frank, it, it scared the crap out of me. When yeah. I, I was much younger then. Uh, but, okay, you you went through this also in the new book. What what's, what did you find out about this one? Yeah, it, 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 and I agree. The first time that I actually heard the story and went back and looked at it, it did freak me out a little oh, yeah. bit. Um, the story is that in the uh, the movie Three Men and a Baby, there was a scene where um, Ted Danson's character, um, his mother, is over with Ted Danson's mm-hmm. character, and they are in the house that, uh, with their the, the baby, yep. of the, you know, the, of the title of the movie. <laughs> and they go walking. Uh, they're, they're kind of talking. It's just the two of them and the baby, and they're kind of in the foreground. Mm-hmm. And they walk in fr- uh, across the stage, or the, the house, if you will. And in the background, there is a window. And in the window, you see what appears to be the ghost of a little boy standing right in the window. Mm-hmm. And they walk past. And then, I don't know if you've heard this version, but when they go back across it later on, it's gone, and in its place, there's what appears to be an image of a shotgun. I don't remember that part. I'm, I would have to watch it again. And and that is also there as well. When you when they walk by the first time, the 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 image of what appears to be a little boy is indeed there. And when they go walk by again later in the scene, it's gone. And there is something that looks like a shotgun, um, kind of standing up, but not on its. Uh, it's standing up on the barrel. Now, I will, if I may interject on this, though, I remember when I did see that for the first time, when the camera panned as they were walking in the room, mm-hmm. um, I did see, obviously, the image of the little boy, but I thought he was actually holding a gun. So that may have been just kind of like, you know, it all, whatever was mixed to, how do you even explain that? Because you're saying, you're saying that there was, when the camera come back, there was just a gun there. So whatever it was, it may have been the gun, and if there was a ghost there, you know, who knows? It may have been part. I mean, how do you, it may have been part of the. I mean, yeah, because the story all kind of jumbles together because yeah. the end result is that the 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 legend is that it is a ghost of a boy who was actually killed accidentally, or in some versions he commits suicide with the shotgun mm-hmm. in the house that they were filming in, right. and that his ghost is haunting there. Um, do you want me to tell the real story though? Or? Please, please. <laughs> um, it's not real. Um, there is indeed what appears to be a, a little boy in the window. Um, first off, it was filmed on a, a set in Toronto, so it was not actually even filmed in a house, an actual house. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, um, and again, thanks to DVDs, although don't tell anybody that you actually rented Three Men and a Baby because it <laughs> looks too funny, but, you know, you can – got it from a friend. Um, <laughs> But you can actually stop it, and um, what you are looking at, what appears to be the image of a, a little boy, it's actually a cardboard cutout of Ted Danson himself. And if you look close enough, you can tell that it's him. Um, he's actually what you see, what looks to be the boy's white ghostly outline, mm-hmm. is actually Ted Danson's tuxedo shirt. He's actually wearing a tuxedo, and if you look really close, you can see his top hat. 
Um, later on in the movie, there is another scene where Ted Danson is actually getting ready to go out on a date, and you can see the cardboard cutout there as well. Um, those cardboard cutouts were actually going to be used for kind of a subplot where Ted Danson's character was doing, I think, uh, dog food commercials or something like that, but he was dancing around in a, um, in a tuxedo. <laughs> and it just ended up that it got left in one of the scenes, and the angle where it goes by, it does look just like a little boy. Yeah, and I mean, I, I'm the first, I'll say it again, I was I, when I first saw that and heard about that legend, it scared the heck out of me. It really yeah. freaked me out. But yeah, I then heard that it was a cardboard cutout. It wasn't anything real at all, and there was nothing to worry about. It was not haunted. And that's even more clarification. You have even more detail to that, so that's even better, James. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, didn't, I never heard about the subplot or anything like that. So I just heard it was a cardboard, cu- cardboard cutout of somebody and not even Ted Danson himself. I just heard it was a cardboard cutout, and that's it. So very thorough, I have to say. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well now, did you... done. <laughs> Kudos to me. Huzzah. Yeah. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Now, have you heard the one about the munchkin committing suicide in, in the, the Wizard, Wizard of Oz? Yes, yes. Well, I've heard about this, but I want to hear what, what you found. Um, well, the, the legend is that um, some of the munchkins were a bit uh, amorous, I guess we should say, with each other during the filming, mm-hmm. and that um, a guy and a girl actually, they decided that munchkin love was not in their cards, and they broke it off and that the male munchkin was so despondent that he decided he was going to commit suicide. Uh, the most popular version is that he decided he was going to um, just basically tie a rope around his neck and hang himself. In another totally bizarre version, he sets himself on fire, but the, the popular one is that he does hang himself, and that you can see him, uh, his last moments actually, you can see him kind of jump off the roof of a house, in one of the scenes, and kind of, you'll see him hanging there. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene in question is, um, they just kind of uh, decided that the Tin Woodsman is going to join the party, and they're all going to take off to go see the wizard and whatnot, and they're doing their little hopping and skipping down the yellow brick road. And as they're doing that, um, they're kind of, it's almost like a three-quarter overhead type of shot, and they're dancing off into the, uh, you know, they're up on the foreground, they yeah. turn away from the camera and they start dancing down the Yellow Brook Road, which kind of hooks off, you know, and kind of goes off to the right, and they disappear around the corner. Right when they do, if you keep your eye on the uh, left-hand side of the screen, mm. there's a little house there, and there are some trees, and you, all of a sudden you'll see this black shape kind of loom up, which does, when you look at it the first time, appears that it's something dropping down, which they say is the, the munchkin actually dangling from the noose. Um but if you look at it more than once and you have both eyes open, it doesn't look anything like someone dangling in there. It's, um, <laughs> to be honest, it, it's just a simple thing of when they were filming it, um, the producers and directors wanted that scene to look very exotic. So their way of making it look exotic was to go to the local zoo and get a bunch of exotic animals like peacocks, those sort of things, and just let them roam around the set. <laughs> So if you keep that in mind, as you're watching them go hopping and skipping down the yellow brick road, if you watch that shape again, it's clearly just an, a, an animal, a dark, you know, bird of some sort that actually just kind of stands up and spreads its wings out. So, Wow. And <laughs> all that, I mean, and we've been hearing about this, I mean, this obviously this legend for years, too, about the Wizard of Oz. And, I mean, just all these little things being put into play, gave that impression of somebody being hung. <laughs> it, yeah, and, it, it, and that's what's weird is because the what you, you're you left with is you're like, okay, well, how did they make that leap from, wow, there's something weird going on in the background there to it's a munchkin who broke up with his munchkin girlfriend and then decided to hang himself. You're like, well, where does that come into play? Well, yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. It's like, where did they get this story from? Well, how did this all come about? to you know, make this whole legend that, that it was, which, it, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's yeah. Weird. Now, here's one I've never heard of before, and i got to ask you about this, James. Um, Indiana Jones. Uh, obviously, we all know and love uh, Harrison Ford. Um, and I don't even know about, well, I can't say we we've, we've said enough curse words for one show, so I'm not going to say this say this on the air. But tell me about this one, a famous scene from Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, I know, I just read it, but a famous scene from the from Indiana oh. Jones. Uh, tell us about this one. Um, 
this was one of my favorite stories because researching it, um, it was kind of in the back of my mind when I came across all of these different scenes where they say, well, this scene was was filmed this way because of this and this, and they make up all these bizarre stories that aren't true. This particular one turned out to be true, and I, I think it's one of the the greatest <laughs> stories associated with a Hollywood movie. There is a very, very famous scene um, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. And Indiana Jones has just fought his way through the, the, the markets, and he's taken on all these guys, and he's been fighting and fighting, and he thinks he's done, and he turns the corner, and there's this big dude who's got all these, you know, swords, and he's kind of swinging them wildly. Yeah. And Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, call him what you'd like, he kind of like gives one of these, oh, come on, man, and then turns away and then just pulls out a gun and shoots him. Yeah, I love that scene. That was not in the original script. Uh, the original script... Um, called for what amounted to be a, what looked like it was going to take about three days to actually film. It was going to be this giant special effects laden battle where they were going to be pretty much what they do in all Indiana Jones movies, hop around, do all that crazy kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, unfortunately, they were filming in a very remote area where conditions were not uh, as sterile, I guess, as you, that is, I guess is the word to use. Yeah. And Harrison Ford and a number of the crew came down with very bad case of uh, dysentery, the uh-huh. runs. Yeah. And when presented with the script and they were getting ready to film that, Harrison Ford, who was thinking at the time, you know, I, I need to be spending time elsewhere, <laughs> sitting down, if you will, <laughs> then filming all this, just said, well, can I just shoot the guy? And that's what they filmed. Well, I think that, you know what, and personally... I, you know, I like the action and all that fun stuff, too, but I remember seeing that film for the first time, and he comes around the corner, and, yeah, and that guy's like this this wicked, like, ninja mm-hmm. dude, and it's like, oh, man, he is going to be in so much trouble. He just pulls his gun out and blows him away. I thought yeah. that was hysterical. We mm-hmm. all fell over. That made the, the film, it gave it that comedy relief it needed for that scene, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, kudos to Harrison Ford, because maybe, you know, not for his benefit, but for everybody else's benefit, that may have been... Uh, made the film better, or that scene even better, by just giving it that comedy it needed. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I had never heard and of that story. the story is great. Yeah, I, did, I had no idea that he had the runs. <laughs> I <love> <laughs> Now, here's another one I haven't heard of either. You know, I, These are fun. I love going through these things. This is just so cool to go through these. The Cursed Script, a Took. Or, is that a film? I've never seen the movie, if it's a movie. Uh, yeah. Attic or Etuk, how do you pronounce that? Etuk, yeah, it's an it's a Eskimo name. Yeah, this was one that um, just seemed a little weird to me. And the more I started researching it, uh, you know, and, and pulling all these different elements together, it got kind of creepy. Um, it was funny because Steph was actually reading the rough draft of it just the other night. And um, she was like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> I didn't know anything about this. But mm-hmm. it's... Um, uh, the beginning part is actually a true story. It's back in, like, the early 60s, and uh, this uh, author wrote uh, a novel called um, The Incomparable Atuk, which is basically, Atuk means uh, grandfather in Eskimo, and the story was about basically a fish-out-of-water type of story. It was a, this big, old, overweight Eskimo that comes to, you know, goes to live in the big city of Toronto. Mm-hmm. And what happened is that um, it was like in the early 80s, but United Artists actually bought the movie rights to it, and they gave it to the screenwriter Todd Carroll. And what he did is he kind of changed things around, and it was still a big Eskimo-type guy, but he was now living in New York City in the thing. And Carroll said that when he wrote it, he had uh, John Belushi was the guy that he wanted to do this. That was who he had in mind to do it. Because he thought, you know, there was going to be this fish out of water story, and you got this overweight guy, and he could pull off being this Eskimo type character. So it was written with Belushi in mind. Um, Belushi read the script. He loved the script. He, he wanted, you know, to to do the role. But before they actually signed contracts, um, Belushi OD'd. Oh, um, God. Yeah. So they said, <laughs> well, if that freaked you out, wait, it gets creepier. <laughs> but. Um, but that's where they say that the curse was actually created because they say that there are, and I did find references to it in old mythology, that if a manuscript that is written for one particular person is taken, that person's spirit is supposed to put a curse on it. It's kind of like, you know, taking, 
something away from its rightful owner. Mm -hmm. So the people who believe in the curse say that it's Belushi who actually ended up cursing it. But regardless, after Belushi died, um, United Artists kind of started looking around, okay, what other, you know, big, literal, uh, comedians would be, you know, hefty enough to take on this role. Mm -hmm. So they, they found Sam Kinison. Oh, and, oh. Sam Kin and Sam Kinison actually signed the contract in 1988, I think it was. He signed the contract. They even filmed, uh, I think it was one scene. And then he basically said, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And he walked off. Um, United Artists sued him for about $5.6 million, oh. which... Um, most people say it was what actually started to ruin Sam Kinison. But then <laughs> right after that, he died, you know, in 1992 in that automobile accident. Yeah. Um, after that, they gave the script to John Candy in yeah, early 1994. Nice. And he was actually said to be thinking about taking, you know, the role on. Um, but he actually was only a couple of weeks later in, I think it was March 4th. 1994, he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, the At the end of uh, 1994, um, November 8th, I think it was, um, uh, writer-slash-actor Michael O'Donoghue, who some people remember from being in the old Saturday Night Live, he was uh, the character Mr. Mike, but he was actually a writer for SNL. Um, he had actually been hired uh, about six months prior to his passing, to rewrite the It Took script, to kind of update it. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of weeks later, he passed away of like a massive uh, cerebral hemorrhage. Oh. Um, they also said that not only was had he been working on the script, but that he had also given the script. He was the one who gave the script to Belushi and Sam Kinison. Um, a couple of years after that, it floated back around, and the next big comedian that they gave it to was Chris Farley. Oh, Jesus. Are you kidding me? No, and, you know, Chris Farley actually was thinking about it, especially because Chris Farley's idol was John Belushi. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So he was thinking about taking the role until he died in December of 97. Um, that, you know, about six months after that, the most recent, if you will, um, was um, Phil Hartman, who had actually been shown the script by Chris Farley, and Chris Farley had told him that he should take a supporting role mm. in the film. And then, unfortunately, you know, his uh, wife actually murdered him. Yeah, so yeah. Um, right now, as of this writing, you know, if you want to call it that, but, you know, as of what, you know, my finishing touches on it and sending it off to the, the publisher – um, United Artists still owns the rights to it, and they currently have actually no plans on their way to uh, to offer it up to any actor. Yeah, I, I don't with. blame them. <laughs> they should just burn it and be done with it. That's, yeah. That, that, I mean, that's a lot of cards to leave in the wake. <laughs> that's all I can say. I mean, I, and the, I mean, all those names too. Those, I mean, these were all very, very famous oh, people. Oh, yeah. I mean, just yeah. hilarious people. That's just a. How many people was that? Six people that died as a result of? I mean, well, they were tied to the script at least. Uh, my goodness, I can't believe that. That's depressing. Well, real quick, I mean, we're 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 nearly out. Yeah, it's depressing. Well, I don't even want to watch the. If they ever saw, I don't even want to watch the movie. Can I get a copy of the script? Though there's a couple people I'd like to show yeah. you. Hey, there's a great mo <laughs> movie I like to see you in. Uh, one thing I want to mention, I, I don't even know if you guys cover this in the book, uh, Armchair Reader Goes to Hollywood, uh, James, but I'm, I'm sure you guys may have touched on the film Poltergeist a little bit. Did you guys? Yeah, yeah, I did actually write on that as well. With it, the, the idea that the film is actually supposed to be cursed, um, the, set was, the, the whole idea of that curse came from the idea that they said that some of the uh, bodies slash skeletons that were used in the uh, final, one of the final scenes of the movie were actually real, and uh, yeah. and that that's what started uh, the curse there. And certainly you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five that I can think of off the top of my head, um, actors and actresses, people associated with the film that, yeah, that died as a result of uh, well, being this, in the film, if you believe the curse. <laughs> this is going to be a really cool read, I think, um, to really flesh out a lot of these legends uh, from these films. I mean, we all talk about them all the time. It's nice to see that there, there's going to be a document out there or a book out there that's going to kind of get to the bottom line of a lot of this stuff. So good job. And this stuff is just amazing. It's so, it's so cool to hear these stories, James. 
Oh, well, thank you. It's my pleasure. Like I said, it, it's all to me. It's all about the telling story. It's funny. I was just telling a friend of mine that like my, you know, my my best friend like in the in the world, you know, Jeff, that I've known since I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, we were like the whole stand by me. I would tell him stories and. He would get all excited when I put his name in stories and stuff. <laughs> and, and, and it's come full circle now because now I get emails and, and uh, you know, Facebook things from his, his daughter, Delaney. And, and Jeff tells me that Delaney is reading my stories, too. So that, I mean, gives me, like, chills. And, I, you know, I think that's the coolest thing in the world. It that, is. Yeah. You know, it's all just about telling really fun stories. And, that, and that's what it's all about. We had a great time, James. But, unfortunately, yeah, we're at the top of the hour here. This hour oh, flew. I know, just, yeah, it just yeah. flew. It's always a bummer. We should just give you two hours next time, James. I think we've been saying that for years, We should too. just shut up and let him talk. Yeah. <laughs> the whole ghostly talk one time. It'll be the best ghostly talk ever. Yeah, no kidding. Tell me about no, it. No, it would not. <laughs> <laughs> James, hand the line for one second, okay? We're not. I will do that. Yet. We're just gonna go to break here. Uh, what do we got coming up here, Bonnie? Oh, okay. Go for the paper. Go for the paper. George, you're too close. I got it first. I got it first. Ooh, go <laughs> Amber. Yes, girls, claw your eyes out over me. <laughs> claw your eyes out over me, my, my Amber, you win. <laughs> Giorgio Zuccolo is going to come out. He's going to be coming here. We're going to be talking about why history is wrong. Now, this is a book by Eric Von Daniken. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm really geeked to talk to Giorgio. So we'll do that here in a few minutes. Uh, this is Ghostly Talk. I'm Scott L. No, it's Scott L. Or...